الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلل أقدة من لساني أفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم وفثنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حمد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حمد مجيد Alhamdulillah, how are all of you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you in the best of health, in the best of iman, in the highest level of iman, I mean, uh, my dears, you know when I'm reciting the du'as, I want you all to listen and internalize those du'as. It is extremely um, negligent of us if we are doing anything else when the dua is meant, is including you. When I'm, I'm making those duas, I'm including you as well. So at that moment in time, please don't type anything. Just listen and make those duas for yourself. Okay? Alhamdulillah. Um, yesterday's dua. How many of you thought about it? Did you? Alhamdulillah. You and um, I read a comment from a sister, and she says, you know, I shouldn't have mentioned Mother Teresa, and um, Christians believe in resurrection. Now, let me just clarify. I I was trying to relate to the hadith that you may the person has done everything good in their life, but they didn't believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You see, that, that's where Christians become different to Muslims. They may believe in resurrection, but they believe in Trinity, and that is shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept any deed. Shirk is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, um, the, the, it, 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 sorry, just, you know, this is the thing. People, they chat and then they distract me. SubhanAllah, just give me a moment, please. Okay, I'll go with the shaitan already. All right, um, so you see, shirk is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive everything, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive yeah. shirk. So what I was trying to say is I'm not, I'm not putting a label on someone is going to go to hell and someone is going to go to heaven. But I am only saying that if anyone has done any good deeds in this world, then uh, and they did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then their deeds were just for dunya and they have nothing, no share in the hereafter. This is what is very, very important for us to, to hold on to and to understand. You, you see what I'm saying? And what I meant is, you know, when children ask, they come up and ask us that, oh, this so-and-so person, are they going to go to Jannah? And are they going to go to the hellfire? And, they, and it is, you know, for them, it is difficult to comprehend that this person has been, you know, um, the pinnacle of goodness and everybody knows that they are good but then we know the hadith that we have to do deeds entirely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't know maybe they become they become Muslims so I'm not going to put my verdict on that this person is going to help this person what we say and we affirm that if they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah will uh, will it will benefit them and Allah will honor them in the hereafter and we don't seriously we do not want people uh, you know us to have nothing uh, on the day of akhirah because the three that are going to become the fuel of um, the fire we've talked we've spoken about it so I hope I've made that clear okay I've closed the chats for now and um, subhanallah another thing is I am overwhelmed and overwhelmed is a is an understatement by the messages i have received and subhanallah you really think in these last 10 nights i'm you know and the, it was so difficult some of the work is so so amazing 
and barakallahu feekum, you know, the ones who've done, I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every drop of ink that you've spent in writing those du'as, some of them, some young children have written as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weight heavy on your scale of good deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor you all for writing it because, you know, for me to mention some and not to mention the other is, you know, I may do some injustice, but Allah, I, I make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weighs it heavy on your scale of good deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the ability to pass it on to other people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to internalize those du'as and you become the, the and, and put it into action as well. So you become a person who is known as a person of Allah. So when people look at you, they have that honor for you. And also they remember Allah just by looking at you because you've internalized the, the, the knowledge into action. Okay, alhamdulillah. Let's begin with the dua. Inshallah, tomorrow if I have time, but you see that we have 27th night today. Um, and, you know, it, it's going to be, a, 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 you know, Laylatul Qadr, most probably. So for me, I, I will not be able to go through your messages and, and, and choose which ones are the best, but I will try my best tomorrow in the afternoon if I have time, yeah? Okay. Let's do, today we're going to do two du'as, so bear with me and inshallah we will. Um, yeah, Allah, I've already gone seven minutes above my time. All right, so it, we'll, we'll be covering two du'as. So I've already done, you know, the two days that I missed, I've covered one extra du'a, Allah many as'aluk al afiyah and today I'm going to do another du'a to make up for those two days of gaps that we had, okay? Inshallah, the du'a that we're going to do today is from the Quran, it's Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah number 74. And it goes, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. Waj'alna lil muttaqina imama. Pay attention, it is Quran. So we are going to focus on the tajweed, okay? The na, the alif mad, don't forget the alif mad. Okay, and the riyatina, make sure that the tip of the tongue is touching the edges of the top teeth. Okay, now this dua is from Surah Al Furqan, and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing the Ibad al Rahman, the slaves of the most merciful. And it is from one of their characteristics that they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for their family and for their children, right, and for themselves, of course. So, Rabbana, when they say Rabbana, they make dua with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows their situation. You know, Ya Rabb, Rabbana is Ya Rabb. Yeah? So, they are connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on another level. And they know, they are for sure that Allah knows their situation. Hab, lana, hab comes from the word hiba. Hiba means a gift. You know, Ya Rabb, I'm not worthy of it, but I want you to give me the gift. Hiba is a greater gift. Hadiyah is a smaller gift. Okay? Sisters, if we can stop messaging and if we can focus and listen. Okay? Jazakumullahu khairan. So Hiba is a gift. So we're asking Ya Rabb, I'm not able, I'm not worthy, but I want you to grant me. You see the grant. Grant is bigger than gift, isn't it? So. Hab, hab coming from the word hiba, which is gift. Lana as. So this person is making dua for himself or herself and including other people. Who are the people? Min from azwajina. Now, azwajina, if a female, if a sister is reciting, that will include her husband. If a man is reciting, this word is going to cover his wife. So if we all, as women, are reciting, then we're going to say our husbands. Okay, so it's generally spouse. It's going to be used for both, male and female. وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا ذُرِّيَّا is just not your immediate children, but generations to come. For generations, your generation, you know, your future generations. What to do? What are you asking? Ya Allah, grant me, you gift me, that my spouse and my children become the coolness to my eyes. 
So what are they asking? Coolness to your eyes uh, is, you know, when we are, I'm sure you all, all have experienced, when we are crying and it's the tears of sadness and you're going through an agony, you know, the warmth of those tears, I'm sure all of you have felt. The tears that come from the heart. And the tears of joy, they don't have that warmth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, subhanAllah, look at the words, profound words. So what are these people asking? They are asking Allah that Allah grant them righteous spouses and children who are righteous. Because if it is otherwise, right? If you, are, if you have a husband who does not practice the deen, if you have um, a, a child who does not practice the deen, and they are far away from the deen and they are into dunya and they are into the, you know, shaitan is playing tricks with them and they are illusioned, then it aches your heart to another level. You know, there's nothing more joyful than to see your, your, your daughter or your son pray without you even asking them. You know, there's nothing more joyous to a mother's heart. Can you all hear me, sisters? Yes, okay, alhamdulillah. Right, see, and, I, and I'm sure all the mothers who are here, they will agree to what I'm saying. You know, because you have to nag your children. In this time of social media, you really have to nag them and you have, moreover, you have to make dua for them. Because sometimes you see living in the West, and I think living everywhere now with the, with the, devices that people have you can be anywhere in the world and it is going to cause you destruction so what us mothers do we make dua sincere dua from our hearts but you know if our children without us saying they are reciting quran honestly tell me put your hand on your uh, on your heart and tell me doesn't it bring you joy it brings you immense amount of joy more than the joy that someone offers you some you know some you know, monetary values they give you some money so this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this is the righteous people, this is how they make dua. And they make dua that, that my wife or my husband and my children, they act according to the Quran and the Sunnah, that they are kind and dutiful. If it is for your husband, that they are dutiful and kind to their parents. And if it is for your for your own children, then Ya Rab, make them kind and dutiful. Because there's nothing more cooling to the eye and, and soothing to the heart. Because you have, you know, you may have, you may be a millionaire, but if your child doesn't speak to you in the right way, it hurts. And if your child is doing everything that makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry, it hurts you. So th these people, they're not only asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide their their spouses and their children to Islam, but also um, Sheikh Asadi, rahimullah, he says that they're also making dua for themselves. Remember, they said, Rabbana Hablana. So they are making dua for themselves. They begin with Hablana, gift us. So, what are they asking? That they're asking for uprightness and righteousness for themselves and for those who are connected to them. And remember, the guidance of anyone is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The guidance of our children, the guidance of our spouses in, is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the prophets, their children were not guided. Nuh alayhi salam is the example. We know Lut alayhi salam, his wife, you see, they were not guided. So the guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is upon us that we don't leave a moment that we don't make dua for them. Yeah, we have to make dua. So this, uh, you know, for those of you who is, is the 27th night, make sure that you make dua, this dua for your children and for your spouse. Yes, of course, unmarried children, um, peer people, yes. You, you are uh, before time making dua, of course you should. Yeah, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our spouses and our children and our generations because you see, 
one wrong decision by your child and they marry someone who is not in their religion or who is not, you know, is not much into practicing Islam, there goes your progeny because the children take off their, after their mother. So please make sure that you make this dua, that you, your generations to come, then they, they take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the looks of what things are going, people are going to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so this dua, Rabbana hablana, Ya Rabb, grant us, gift us. What? From our spouses and from our children, that they become righteous. So they become a delight to my heart and the coolness to my eyes. Because if it is not the case, and if it is on the contrary, it is going to be, a, it is going to be an agony for me. And then, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا وَجَعَلْنَا And make us. لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لِ is for. مُتَّقِينَ the righteous. Imam is, Imam meaning the one who is guided or an example or a leader. Imam is a leader. Okay? So make us the example for the righteous people. And do not make us someone who is who, who are misguided. So what are we saying? That the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Ibadur Rahman, they are making dua that Allah makes them an example for al-muttaqeen, the righteous. How? In their speech and in their actions. So that people follow and people follow their and trust their speech. Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas and um, Al-Hassan also said that leaders who would be taken as examples in good. And others said, guides who would call others to goodness. So you see, you're making dua that Allah makes you someone who other people benefit from. And not only you, but your spouse and your children as well. Yeah, so this person wants, Ibadur Rahman wants the worship to be you know, connected to the worship, their worship connected to the worship of their children and of their offsprings. Right? Why? Because we know that there's a hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, he said that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa said, when a son of Adam dies, his deeds stop, except for three, a righteous child who will pray for him, knowledge from which others may benefit after him, or ongoing charity. So you see, that if you have made dua for your child, then Allah has guided your child. And not only your child, but your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, your progeny until the day of judgment, that khair is going to benefit you in your grave. Not the castle and the palaces that you have made, that people are going to fight after you. And also that Allah, you made, you made dua, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. So you were someone who the community followed in good, the Ahlul Khair, the Muttaqeen, they followed you and they followed your footsteps. So that is the knowledge that you left behind that's going to benefit you. Yeah, or any other ongoing charity. And whilst we are on the topic of ongoing charity, please, uh, I think the admins have told me that Ulum Academy has summarized all the, the ongoing charity projects. Make sure that if it is an odd night, for you then make sure and if it is the 27th night make sure you put a, a bit of your share in it please that's going to be immense benefit to you inshallah so let's focus on the dua again Rabbana hablana min azwajina Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina
So make this dua constantly in your, uh, in, in, you know, whenever you have your duas from your heart, sit down, make dua for your children. Yes, I, I read into and I asked, if, you are, if your intention is not to recite the Quran, but to make dua, then you can make this dua in your sujood. Okay? Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our spouses and our children and the proj and our progeny to be guided to Islam and to be guided to the correct Quran and Sunnah and not to be deviated. That is most important. Okay. Let's make, uh, let's test you. Okay. Because we're going to do two, two du'as. So I'm not going to open the chats for everyone. I'm reading your messages. Okay. Rabbana Hablana. So I'm sure now everybody understood. Rabbana, oh my Rab, oh Allah, oh my Lord, Hablana. Everybody understood Hiba now? Gift us, grant us. Yes, well done. Grant us. Min Azwajina. From our spouses. Okay, the Na, the Na is our, right? وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا And from our offsprings. And now you know that it's not your immediate children, but your generations to come. قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ أَعْيُنْ is from the Ain, is eyes. قُرَّةَ Yes. Comfort to our, our eyes, coolness to our eyes. Wajalna lil muttaqina. So give me the meaning of the na in wajalna. Make us and make us li for lil now muttaqina righteous and make us for the righteous. Imama has two meanings. It is going to be leader and Example. So you become the example of goodness, example of khair, example of, uh, you know, the knowledge that people will come back to. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Let's make this dua one more time and then we move on to that dua, the next dua. Let's say from our hearts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it in Ramadan. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. You can't stop. If it is not changing the meaning, we can't stop. Okay. Wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Yes, you can make this dua uh, before taslim as well. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Let's move on. The next dua that we're doing, I'm sure you already know this dua. Yeah? Type one if you know this dua. MashaAllah. But let's now delve into the meaning. Okay? Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanallahi al-azim. Now listen to this. What is the meaning of the word Subhanallah? You know, when we say Subhanallah, and can we listen now, please? No typing. Subhanallah is the speech, and it includes a very, very important meaning of Tawheed in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. You know, the six pillars of belief which is the first one, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are we saying? When we are saying subhanallah, we are glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying Allah is above and beyond any fault, any shortcoming, any corrupt thinking that people have or any wrong ideas people have about God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above and beyond it, okay? And when a person in the slave of Allah says subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it. Now say it from your heart. Mean it when you're saying, subhanallah. Meaning, 
Ya Rab, you are free from any imperfection. Yeah, you know, when people say pure, you don't really understand. When you, when you know exactly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above any fault. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, he said, Subhanallah means declaring Allah to be above every bad thing. And there's another hadith. Uh, Ibn, a man came to Ibn Abbas, uh, in Ibn Abbas and said, um, we know la ilaha illallah means there is no God other than Allah. And we know alhamdulillah that all blessings come from Allah. And we know um, Allahu Akbar that there is nothing greater than Allah. But what does subhanallah mean? So Ibn Abbas replied, this is a word that Allah has approved for himself and has enjoined his angels to say and inspired the elite of his creation to utter. So you see that when you are saying subhanallah, you are becoming at par with the angels. You're doing what the angels do. Yeah, and what else you're doing, you are, you are be doing what the elite of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say. So what, what are we doing when we're saying subhanallah? We are venerating the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you know that this tasbih means to declare Allah is free of anything bad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself praises himself by saying subhanah. And subhanallah is a restricted phrase that cannot be used in reference to any other creation. Yeah, no other creation uses this word subhanallah. And I was gonna say something, I just totally forgot. Um, inshallah, I will remember it. So, you see, when you're saying subhanallah, don't rush it, my dears. Don't say subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. Especially when we're doing after the salah 33 times. If you're in a rush, do it 10 times. But say subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. And understand and internalize the meaning. You see, people have other gods. And those gods have faults. They have shortcomings. But when you are saying subhanallah, you are declaring that my Rabb is free and above false. My Rabb is full of perfection. And you know, the Arabs, whenever they find something to object and something very serious, what do they say? They say, SubhanAllah, or observe them. And I want you to make this habit of yours as well. Something that amazes you, something that you know, um, you're taken aback, immediately get into the habit of saying, subhanallah. If anything falls down, get in the habit of saying, bismillah. Okay? The next word, wa bihamdi. Now, wa bihamdi, wa and be with hamdi, hamd, hamdihi, his praise. So this, wa is indicating an action that comes immediately after. So what are you saying? You're saying that Allah is the most perfect, free from any imperfection. And then immediately, what do you do? You praise him. So you, you ask, what you're trying to say in this whole statement is that I glorify Allah at the time when I'm praising him for his help and support. Yeah? So you are saying consecutively, Simultaneously, I glorify Allah and I praise him. So you see the hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are two words, two words which are dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are very light on the tongue, meaning very, very easy to say, but very heavy in, in the mizan, in, in the balance. And they are, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -azim. So what are these words? You know, on the go, if you're saying it, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -azim. Understand what are you saying? You're saying mighty words, mighty words. We, we, you may utter easily, 
but on your scale, when you will see them, you will be amazed by the weight of the words that you have said. And what are you doing? You are joining the angels in the habit when you are remembering Allah by saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And then immediately in the next breath, you're saying, Wabihamdi. So I praise you, Ya Rabb. I praise you. And Subhanallah al Azim, again, Ya Rabb, you are free from any imperfection. And Al Azim means you are attesting to the greatness of Allah. You are saying, Ya Rabb, you are the one who has all power, all might, all strength. And everything in this world is insignificant. Every single thing in this world is, is, is trivial, is minute, is you know, in micro uh, in terms of its, its um, in, great, in, in terms of its greatness or anything to do with it. Ya Rab, you are the most great, al adim So immediately you see how you are declaring the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how happy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be. And you see why it's going to be heavy on the, on, the, on the balance? Because you are surrendering yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are glorifying Allah in the best manner. Using the best names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al adim is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never take these, the, the zikr lightly. Understand when you're saying, you see, we have got into, we become a nation where somebody tells us, read this hundred times, you will read it. Read this 200 times, you will read it. Read it thousand times and you will read it. And that recitation will not have any soul to it. It is the habit of the angels, not the words of the angels. Um, this is the habit of the angels, that the angels constantly do the tasbih, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know this, if you open up Surah Baqarah and ayah number 30, if I'm not wrong, let me just open it as well. And ayah number 30, uh, when, they, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, says to the angels that I'm going to, I'm going to make Adam and what do they say? What do they say? What do they reply? That you're gonna create some someone who's gonna go and cause um, corruption on earth, whereas نَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ So you see that angels have the habit of tasbih. So when you join and doing the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the, you are doing something that the angels are in the habit of doing. Yeah? So let's say this dua one more time. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al azim. The va, va, make sure it's correct, yeah? Azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al azim. Far is Allah from any imperfection. Wabihamdihi. And, and now I've told you that immediately when you have declared Allah free from imperfection, the wow indicates that you are simultaneously also praising him. And then far is Allah, the sublime, from any imperfection. Yeah. And please be careful of uh, not saying the wrong, the Wa bihamdihi, no. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, ha ha. And Subhanallahi al azim. Alhamdulillah, we've done, you know, it, it may seem to you that is um, a dua, which is something you know, but sometimes reminders benefit us. And, and now you know the, the extent of the greatness of this dua, and you can now appreciate. Why is this dua going to be heavy on the scales? Because you are becoming someone who is, you know, saying the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And mind you, if I and you are not going to praise Allah, it is not going to affect him in any way. The praise that we do is going to help us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many other creations who are doing his tasbih, 
all the time, all the time, from the angels to the depths of the ocean, the fish in the ocean, to the creatures on the earth, every single entity from the planets to the stars, every single thing is doing a tasbih. So it is a dua, right? You are going, because Prophet ﷺ taught us this. You see the hadith, it is that the Prophet ﷺ said, see these words, okay? And tasbih is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? So whenever we're doing some du'as, remember du'a al-masala and du'a al-ibadah. So this is going to be du'a al-ibadah. We are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not putting our need, but we are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, let's test you all now, inshallah. Subhanallah. So what is subhanallah? All glory is for Allah, are you sure? Is that what I've taught you? Yes, Allah is free from any imperfection. Allah does not, Allah is above and beyond any fault. Yeah. And you know, somebody wrote to me that what is the meaning of the perfect words? Meaning all the best, all the words of Allah are the perfect words. Okay. Allah, far is Allah from imperfection. Wa bihamdihi, break it up for me. Break it up for me, please. Wa and B with and or yeah. Uh, hamdihi, I praise him. Yeah. So and so you are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise him. Okay. And praise is for him. The praise is for him. Subhanallah. Again, we know this. Allah is free from any imperfection. al azim Now, sublime. You see, English will not do justice to the translation of the words. I've told you, Allah is the sublime and what, what is going to be the owner of all power. It is Allah the great, al azim all-powerful, almighty. Yeah? And Allah is the owner of all the power. Okay? The sublime, they've written it down, but it doesn't do it justice. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn the Arabic language in a, in a manner that we don't need to depend on English translations. Jazakumullahu khairan, my dears. You've given me a lot of your time. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all the tawfiq to make du'as in a manner that Allah is pleased with you all, my dears. For those of you who are um, who have the odd night, may Allah allow you to witness Laylatul Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us, for all the all of us who are coming together to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most beautiful uh, of the words, the dua the talk, that was taught, taught to us by Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, allow us to remember these du'as in our in in our du'as in our salah, and may Allah allow us to give haq to to the the way that we are doing the du'a. Yes, today twenty seventh night. If wherever is twenty seventh night, there is a high possibility of it being uh, Laylatul Qadr. So you know, try and forget and forgive everybody who has wronged you and try and engage in lots of dua. If not, if you're tired, just sit down and do a tasbih of subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al -azim. Okay? Yeah, and just short duas, whatever. Rabbi ghfirli, anything, or, you know, small duas, but, you know, in, it, alternate between your duas. Sometimes recite two pages of the Quran, then go back doing tasbih, then do two rak'ah. Uh, then come back so backwards and forwards so you are keeping yourself uh, busy in and you're not getting tired inshallah may Allah allow you to witness Laylatul Qadr my dear and uh, and the ones who are in the hospital may Allah give you shifa and may Allah record your intention of if you wanting to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah accept it from all of you my dear Oh, yeah, Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni should be on your fingertips all the time Okay, Jazakumullah khairan, my dears. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika shadwan la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka to Willay. Yes, my dears, send me your journals tomorrow. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.